guys kind of go after two things in their life, either getting paid or getting laid. They want to look cool and they want to be seen as powerful. It really just comes down to that. Till those two things are satisfied, the third option, purpose and power, don't really come into the play, into the, into the subject. And so in this video, I'm going to talk about what it takes to be a powerful man who lives his life with purpose and can take or leave pretty much anything or anybody in life and can actually enjoy true freedom. There's this concept, get paid, get laid. And if you're watching this, you're like, yeah, I kind of did that, right? So when you're younger, puberty hits, you were thinking about one or two things. How do I get paid or how do I get laid? And you probably weren't thinking anything more complicated than that. You might have made it more complicated, but it was pretty simple. And most guys, they play in this game of getting paid or laid for most of their life. And it's this game of whack-a-mole. For a while, they're getting paid. And they might want a family, so they'll try to get laid, essentially having a family. And then that's going for a while, and they realize they got to get paid more. So they try to get paid more, and then they find out their relationship's falling apart. And so then they try to get laid more, and they get to play in this game of whack-a-mole. Or maybe he's like an entrepreneur when he's younger, and he's going like, paid, 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 paid. And then he's just being with a lot of random women. And so this whole game of power, like personal power, never actually comes into the picture. And this power is born out of purpose. And it's not just born out of purpose, but it's purpose pointed straight at God. And even if you're an atheist, this picture comes clear that it's like, well, I can go after any kind of material possessions that I want. And we all kind of have this sense of no matter how many material possessions I get, it's never really going to be enough, right? Because you get something new, then you get used to it. Then you get something new, then you get used to it. It's just a bigger, fancier car. It's a bigger, fancier house. And, you know, then you find yourself having enough money. You're just trying to buy time, right? You hire a nanny, hire a landscaper, hire a housekeeper, and you hire like an assistant, and you're just trying to buy time back. Most people, if you watch them, they're just waiting for retirement, and they're waiting to just die. And this really kills me because it's like, they, what were they ever pointing their life at? Just this place where they can finally relax? It's like, I can finally relax in my retirement. It's like, yeah, but your body went to shit. Like, for instance, right now, I'm dealing with this, and I know somebody very close to me who's got all kinds of health problems, and he doesn't really want to do anything to fix them unless it's a pill. And it's like, well, you could just exercise. You could, you know, watch your diet. You could do all of these things. And he's like, and it just becomes apparent that he's retired, and really what he wants to do is wake up and not have any responsibilities. But then it's like, well, what are you doing? There's no, what's the fulfillment in that? And now I could say, I could, you could argue, well, you know, you could play the game of, well, Freedom is, is releasing desire, but the problem is he desires a lot and he hasn't gotten to that place yet, so we can't have that argument. But most people are doing this. And you'll see this, like doctors tell, this, tell you this all the time. It's like, guys, well, they'll get to retirement. It's just like they're just waiting to die at this point. It's like, well, I'm old and there's not much I can do, so I guess I'm just going to watch sports all day and sit on the couch and get old and fall apart. And so nobody really wants to live that kind of life where they're old and feeble and they can't really get around. They're just waiting to die. It's crazy. I can't imagine why somebody would want to do that. Maybe I'm just wired different. I don't know. But this whole game of being powerful in your life requires you, as a man, to get your relationship house in order. So you have this beautiful, loving relationship so that you can get that on lockdown. And we're always trying to get that locked down. And then it requires you to make a good amount of money and so you feel somewhat free and get that on lockdown. And once you have this, you're in this good enough place. Here comes the next trap. When you get into this good enough place, the next thing is like, well, now what? Now what do I do? And you start going after like crazy experiences. And a lot of guys will just sabotage the hell out of stuff. They'll burn their business to the ground or they'll have an affair on a wife that they truly love. And they're like, why the hell would you do this? Are you out of your mind? He's like, well, I'm bored. Or he was chasing after one of these two things, getting paid or getting laid so hard, he finally burned out and he just said, fuck it all and I'm leaving. And this happens because he doesn't have the next stage, which is purpose. And this can be incredibly elusive for men because the game is you put the purpose before getting paid and getting laid. If you can put the purpose before getting paid and laid, now when you get the wife, she now falls under, okay, what purpose is he doing? I've got this, this big thing that I'm trying to accomplish in my life, and can this woman help me or hinder me in that process, right? If I'm doing this, if I've got this big thing I want to accomplish in my life, it's going to take money. How can my business either give me that thing that I'm trying to do, 
or give me the cash to do the thing that I want to do, right? And I knew a guy, he wanted to do like a college campus ministry thing and he wanted to turn it into a business. We're like, that ain't gonna fucking happen, dude. For one, college kids are broke and you're not gonna really monetize it unless you try to like take donations and stuff like that. But that's not gonna be enough to really do it. So what we gotta do is we gotta take your real estate business and we gotta shoot that fucker to the moon and then take that cash and pour it into your labor of love, which would be your on-campus ministry. And so that's exactly what he did. Or I have another guy who's also a real estate guy, and he turned his real estate business into this whole game of expansion, of leveling up, of purpose and God and everything. And so he went into his employees and he got them all within the Warrior app and the Warrior process in a way, and he used them. And so his thing was like, I'm gonna uplift all the realtors under me and other realtors here in the Valley and do as much as I can with that. Or another guy I know who's, who's building these steel houses, he decided to do the same thing with his company, with hundreds of employees, and that's pretty remarkable. So he took this entire concept that I just said, but took that into a purpose into the steel industry, this, this steel housing industry, and just poured it all into all his employees so that working for him now isn't just a game of working for him. It's a game of purpose for everybody in and under him. And so then it's like, you work for that company, you work for a company that not only they have a higher vision, but that they foster and encourage your higher vision within yourself, even if it means you leave in a company. And that's pretty noble and admirable. And his company, all these guys, their companies are just blowing up. Why? Because they took their purpose and they pointed it straight to God. And they're unapologetic about it. A lot of people are afraid to do this. A lot of people, especially Christians, will say, well, you know, money's the root of all evil, and it's not. There's a lot of stories in the Bible that talk about how God really wants you to be wealthy and he wants you to build that wealth so that you can be better to serve him. And I, and I would challenge you to do the same. But until you put purpose before getting paid and getting laid, you're not really going to have, you're going to kind of be listless for a while. You're going to be drifting around. And you being a powerful man means that you're going to have to get really good on your habits. You're going to have to get really good in your time management. You're going to have to get really good in what kind of information you put into your mind. Because that shit, like if you start putting a bunch of stuff, porn, video games, drinking all the time, it's just going to distract you. It's going to take away from your power. And so we want to get all our, our domains aligned. And I can tell you, without a shadow of a doubt, if you've got a woman in your life who's manipulating you and pulling you down, that is a huge power sink. You're never ever going to do big shit and swing a big dick in this world if that's happening to you. In fact, this happens to thousands of men. I've worked with thousands of men in this problem particularly where their woman runs the roost. And the guys that are very like devout, like Mormon or Seventh-day Adventist or whatever, they will have a hard time, the hardest time, because what they end up doing is they make their wife their life. They say, well, God tells us we should never get divorced. And this video is not really about this, but the problem is he's made his wife his idol. And in that context, God will absolutely wreck your fucking marriage to save you so that you can be a powerful minister to him. Anyways, guys, that's how, that's kind of like a high level of how you got to be powerful. You know, put the purpose before getting paid and laid. And hopefully this has been helpful for you. If you do, if it is, like it and subscribe for more in the future. And I'll see you in the next one.